Hello again everyone and welcome to the third lesson of working with vectors. In the previous lesson, we solved problems on inclined planes by constructing accurate scale diagrams. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to apply trigonometry to solve problems involving inclined planes. In the task from our previous lesson, we considered a body being held stationary on a smooth inclined plane. Here is the problem again. A plane is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. A force of 200 newtons is applied to keep a box stationary on the smooth inclined plane. Find the weight of the box. The problem says a smooth surface, suggesting that the box may slide down the surface as there is no frictional force. But remember, instead of there being a frictional force, the problem does say that a force of 200 newtons is applied to keep the box stationary. We use this fact to complete a scale drawing of a closed triangle and I have found the weight to be 400 newtons. Here is my scale diagram. I have drawn the surface of the inclined plane at 30 degrees to the horizontal and you can see that the 200 newton force acts parallel to the surface in an upward direction. Now using the scale I have drawn in a line of 10 centimeters to represent this force. I then drew a line perpendicular to this force to represent the normal force and the weight acts vertically downwards. Now to measure the length of the weight, we measure from where the weight vector intersects with the normal force to where the weight vector intersects with the horizontal. On measuring, we find the weight is equal to 20 centimeters and using our scale and converting, we have 20 centimeters multiplied by 20 newtons per centimeter, which equals to 400 newtons. If you got that right, well done. If you didn't, well try again or ask your teacher for some help. So far we have looked at objects at rest on an inclined plane. When the surface was rough, the force of friction holds the object in place. When the surface was smooth like in our task, an applied force held the object in place. Now in all these situations, you will have noticed that we have a right angle triangle. So we can use trigonometry to solve problems instead of drawing a scale diagram. Here's the scenario for today's lesson. Consider a crate at rest on an inclined plane. The angle of inclination of this plane is 15 degrees. A worker loads the crate with one sack of potatoes which weighs 100 newtons and the crate weighs 250 newtons. The crate remains stationary on the inclined plane even when it is loaded with a second sack of potatoes. Here is a summary of the question. Angle of inclination is 15 degrees. Two sacks of potatoes of 100 newtons each in a crate weighing 250 newtons. We are asked to find the magnitude of the force of friction keeping the crate stationary and the magnitude of the normal force. Let's first start by drawing a diagram of the forces that act on the crate when it contains two sacks of potatoes. We know that there are three forces acting on the crate. There is the normal force which acts between the crate and the surface of the inclined plane. There is the frictional force which acts along the surface of the plane and the weight which acts vertically downward. Now let us determine the weight of the force acting here in a downward direction. So the weight is equal to the weight of the crate which is 250 newtons plus two sacks of potatoes at 100 newtons each. So the total weight of the crate is the weight of the crate which is 250 newtons plus its load which is 200 newtons gives us a total of 450 newtons. With two sacks of potatoes in the crate it remains at rest on the slope. Therefore, we know that all the forces acting on it are in equilibrium. So let's draw the triangle of forces for this situation. The weight acts vertically downward. Now I have drawn a line which represents the weight of 450 newtons. At the head of the weight vector, 
I have drawn a horizontal line at right angles. You draw in the 15 degrees which indicates the angle of inclination and shows the direction of the frictional force along the slope. From the tail of the weight vector, I have dropped a perpendicular line to meet the surface of the slope. Now it is this perpendicular line that fixes the normal force and the frictional force to the inclination of the slope. Now you find at the intersection of the normal force and the inclination of the slope, I place an arrowhead. It is this length here that will give us the magnitude of the frictional force. Let's add a few more details to our diagram. We can calculate the angle between the weight vector and the frictional force as theta is equal to 90 degrees minus 15 degrees, which is equal to 75 degrees. So this angle equals 75 degrees. Now to find the angle between the weight vector and the normal force, we know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So it would be 180 degrees minus 90 degrees plus 75 degrees gives us a value of 15 degrees. So the angle here is 15 degrees. Now this is an important point to remember. The angle between the weight and the normal force is always equal to the angle of inclination of the inclined plane. Remember too that the normal force is always perpendicular to the frictional force. So this triangle is always a right angle triangle. We can apply the basic trig ratios to any right angle triangle. Let's recall the definitions quickly before we use them to solve a problem. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now let's apply trigonometry to find the magnitude of the frictional force and the normal force acting on the loaded crate where it is stationary on the inclined plane. The frictional force is the force vector that lies opposite the angle of 15 degrees in this triangle. It is also the force that acts up along the slope of the inclined plane. Now to find the magnitude of the frictional force, we use the formula sine, which is opposite over the hypotenuse. The formula is sine of 15 degrees, which is equal to F, the frictional force, over weight W. Now we make F the subject of our formula, so F is equal to W multiplied by sine of 15 degrees. W being the weight, which is 450 newtons, multiplied by sine of 15 degrees. And using our calculator, it's 450 multiplied by 15 degrees sine, which gives us an answer, rounded off to the nearest newton, is 116 newtons. Now we look at the triangle again, and we select a trig ratio to calculate the magnitude of the normal force. The normal force is the force vector that lies adjacent to the angle of 15 degrees. So we will be using the cosine ratio, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So its cos of 15 degrees is equal to the normal force N over the weight. So we have N is equal to the weight multiplied by cos of 15 degrees. Now substituting the value for the weight, which is 450 newtons, multiplied by cos of 15 degrees. Using our calculator, we have 450 multiplied by 15 degrees cos, which gives us an answer of 435 newtons. Before we end the lesson, let's review what we have learned so far. We solved the problem using trig ratios. Now this can be easily done because a triangle of forces for a body at rest on an inclined plane will always give us a right angle triangle of forces. Therefore, there was no need to construct an accurate scale diagram for this problem. To solve the problem, I constructed a sketch and filled in all the information we know about the problem. It is also very useful to know that the angle between the normal and the force vector will always be equal to the angle of inclination. Now it's time for today's task. A boy in a go-kart is moving down a small hill. He applies brakes and comes to rest on the hill. The weight of the boy and the go-kart is 480 newtons and the angle of the slope is 12 degrees. Use trigonometry to find the braking force of the go-kart. 
to help you, here is a diagram of all the forces acting on the cart. In this case, the force that holds the cart in place is the braking force. And the weight is 480 newtons acting downwards and it is shown here. Remember that the normal acts at 90 degrees to the surface. And the angle between the normal force and the weight vector is 12 degrees. This means that the other angle, theta, will be 90 degrees minus 12 degrees, which will give us an answer of 78 degrees. I am sure that you will be able to complete this task without too much trouble. In our next lesson, we will be considering what happens when we increase the number of bags of potatoes in our crate on the inclined plane. Can you predict what may happen? Think about that. Until next time, goodbye.